All right, I got some new uh, some new parts. Yeah, M German made in Turkey. <laughs> Idle control valve hoses. I'm gonna see if these. Let's see if these work. Not that. Yeah. Made in Turkey. Okay. Pretty robust. So, so yeah. So this is John. This is the R129. Uh, 1991 500 SL Roadster, and uh, I'm just gonna put the valve off, pull the valve off, and uh, put uh, put these new hoses on there. There's the valve right here. So I got a little light. Yeah, there's the valve right here. That's a cold start valve right there. So there was one uh, one hose that last time I took it off, you know, it's kind of the hose is kind of funny, and uh, I need to uh, get the emissions tested here in uh, California, and they're pretty strict on everything. So I'm making sure that. It's that the idol's not going to get sticky on them and fail the car. Car hasn't failed in 10 years. We have to get it tested every other year. And God, it just seems like it goes like that, you know. So today I went and put uh, some fresh gas in it and filled it up almost. Um, gas is close to five dollars a gallon here for premium so you know that's always fun anyways uh i'm going to take off this part here it's just a bunch of clips and a hose over there and then it should uh it should come off and then we'll get this thing out look at the inside of it i've always wondered uh why these things get dirty on the inside? There's a valve in there that's, oper you know, operated by a, a voltage. Um, but they get dirty inside, and they, you know, they get uh, they get sticky. They're supposed to slide in and out, and it depends on the en engine temperature. There's a lot of things involved, um, a lot of other parts that control this from what I've read you know I mean there's not a whole lot of information on these things but this one now it's all controlled by I imagine the ECU and God there's all kinds of people on Ben's world that there's posts on there people you know with a high idle issue and oh my god some of the troubleshooting they have to go through you know to if this thing's not getting the right voltage or something, I mean, there's all kinds of little throttle position switches and just all weird stuff, EVAP. I mean, all kinds of weird things going on. Anyways, I want to pull this thing on. Yeah, just undo all these snaps. Slowly get this out of the way. Okay, fine. Good lord. That off. Oh, wow. Jeez. All right. And this lovely hose. Yeah. 
Yeah, I gotta. Oh, finally. Okay. And a ten millimeter. It ran good today. I took it out for a drive. Idle was stable. I was getting it warmed up. It's starting to cool off here still. It was 88 degrees Fahrenheit here in Southern California. So yeah, that washer, okay. Okay. Uh, and it's hard leaning over this long hood wide. Okay, so. I don't know if it'll just pull off or not. Okay. That'll pull off. In there. I think it's free. I'll leave that there. There it is. Let's go inspect it. I like to know. I have a hard time finding a lot of information, but yeah, you can see where. I don't know if you can see where's the camera. There's a little fold right here. And these things always, their symptoms is, it's fine when it's cold, but once the car gets up to temperature, um, the idle can uh, get stuck high at 1,000, 1,500 RPM. And that's the symptoms that this thing is not, it's not sliding back and forth. There's a, like a little valve in here that goes back and forth. And it controls the airflow. There's one. This goes on the lower one, bigger. Yeah, so that goes on the bigger. I don't know if you can see in there. Let's see. This way? You can kind of see the valve in there. It's it looks pretty clean. And then getting these off without destroying anything. Wow. Yeah, it, it cracked, so... There's no saving this thing. Definitely stubborn. Ay, yeah, yeah, I got it's oblong. I'm on the wonder. Where'd that piece go? Oh yeah, okay, so this one's oblong also. And there's that valve in there. Good, that'll fit there. I can't, I can't find, where'd that other part go? Just shot off. There it is. Good. Yeah, which is the part, yeah, see this part right here I don't know if you can see that, but 
right right there uh no yeah yeah right there it's kind of folded over i don't know if you know expansion contraction these things this thing is cold these are cool you know once they heat up they start expanding and maybe it's this little this little fold was letting uh air creep in there and raising the idle yeah it's awfully clean in there okay <laughs> now we gotta oh my god are these all blown too that's just round Oh yeah, I never, 20 years of working on these, or owning these cars and working on them. Uh, okay, okay, pretty good. Okay, here it is. Uh, this right here is a little plug that comes out, and there's kind of a, not a screw, but from what I saw on the internet, on one guy's video, uh, it's a thing where you, you take a threaded bolt and you screw it in there and it gets hold of that piston and you can, you can knock it out a little bit or knock it in to get it to adjust correctly, but uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'd rather buy another one, but I don't know if you can see in there. It's really hard to. There's a little bit of a grime in there. It's really hard to shine in there, but there's a little bit of grime. Little discoloration. Um, I don't know where all that stuff comes from, but I'm just going to spray it out with some uh, carburetor cleaner for now. I got the other half off and uh, bang. VD. Oh, there's part number in case anybody wants to look for that. 12 volt, but I don't think this thing gets a full 12 volt. I saw one guy on the internet with a uh, applying 12 volt to this, and then you can look in there and you can see the valve going, eh, 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 you know. Another guy was using a nine volt battery. See that valve moved, you know, but, I don't know, I've read that this doesn't, it's not 12 volts, it's uh, something like 4.5 volts. So they're applying a ton of current to it, and sure, it's gonna move, but, you know, um, it's like 4.5 volts at one amp. Could be wrong, but that's kind of like what I saw on the internet. It's hard finding, uh, I'd like to see what's exactly inside of this. You know, it'd be fun to cut one open, but I don't want to do that. This one still works. It just gets dirty, and I, I'd like to know where the dirt comes from. You know, hold on, let me get a Q-tip. All right. So... 
Look inside here. Like this one here. I can't shine the light in there real good, but it really gets dirty in there. And I cleaned it out last time. Let's see if I can. See all that black stuff? Last time I cleaned it out, it was kind of like little black granules that I was getting out of here. You know, I was just thinking maybe, maybe the inside of these uh, pipes were, these hoses were uh, just from age starting to fall apart and letting loose black, black rubber into that thing and, and clogging it up. Some of these on eBay, they'll be just black in there, just filled with crud. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna clean this out. So. Yeah, there you can see the, there's that valve. Right there, and that closes and opens. And that's what adjusts your idle. <laughs> Is that crazy? I miss carburetors with like an idle screw that you just turn. Anyways, I'll keep cleaning it. See all the dirt I got out of it? I mean, it's not that much, but it's really clean now. So, I don't know. Um, imagine when you end up getting a lot of dirt in here, the valve doesn't open up or close right. It kind of like blocks it from sealing off. Um, where's that dirt? Where's all that stuff come from? You know? Is it coming from these old nasty pipes? That's what I want to know. I want to know. Yeah, it's all like weird and dirty in there. Yeah, I think I cleaned it a month ago, maybe. Okay. Okay, so I was wondering about these, these hoses here where it's like air delivery, right? And it goes to each fuel injector, right? Both sides. And, um, yeah, it's this right here. The, the idle control valve is over here. I have it off, I think, yeah, on this picture. And it goes this way. And I asked on Ben's world, what do those do? And, uh, so, my buddy, uh, Robin, from the UK, he's got the same uh, S, uh, year I do. So, he says Ford would probably call it German mischief. Those hoses deliver air past the injectors into the cylinders. More air equals higher revs. This is how the idle control valve maintains the idle incredibly intu unintuitive but marvelously clever so yeah you know i mean you know, i asked him i imagine the air where's the air come from the air comes from the intake right and goes through the uh, air cleaner past the filters enters here that's where your air and then this makes the fuel and so this port right here that the idle control valve hooks on to that's where it must get its air from i asked that question and we'll see what he says but you know i'm pretty sure it works like that and then the, the idle control valve opens and closes and it's so weird so if you have any idle problems and you got a, one of these M119 motors with all kinds of weird 
idling issues and stuff like that. I would replace all this stuff if you can even find it. I mean, look at how many possibilities there would be for bad idle, other weird running behaviors, you know. If any of these things would crack, I think I've seen these parts for sale. I was trying to figure out what those were at one time. So there's just elbows, hoses. I think these are hard plastic. Uh, it's so weird. Okay. I got my fluorescent green. <laughs> I got these for free, and so I'm like uh, reviewing them. I guess they're pretty good. Um, yeah, so just got to work this in without breaking that, that little tube. Please don't break. Good, huh? Ay, 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 ay. <sighs> Ta da. Okay. Uh, something like that. And you got a smaller one, something like that. All right, let's fire it up. Hear the air pump. It'll shut off. Sounds good. All right, I'm on my way. We'll get it smogged. Mission testing. Look how low the RPMs are. I mean, they're, uh, they're right at 600. Been cleaning out that valve really good. Taking the hoses off. You know, really helped it. Yeah, look at that. It's like 600. You know, the only way to really clean that thing out is taking those hoses off and getting the Q-tips in there and clean that, that little surface. Anyways. I got my coupon. But it'll be $49. Model year, older, $49.75. I don't know. Yeah, I'm running the AC to help warm the engine up because it's uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I run the AC, it helps bring it up, and I'm almost at the 85 mark, or almost there. It's better to do this on a really hot day. Get, you want to get those catalytic converters like red hot, but it's hard when it's when the temperature cools. You know, at least this is California, so. You know, the older cars like this, 30 plus years, you gotta do do all this stuff. And here we are.
been going to this place for 10 years, I think. Yep. All right, here we are at the California Emissions Center. Yeah, so preferably you want to get those catal catalytic converters uh, really hot, you know. At one time, uh, I, uh, I had a 1990 SE. And this was probably, oh my God, eight, nine years ago, maybe. And it kept failing. I kept taking the places. It kept failing. It had the M103 engine like the 300E. It kept failing and failing. I just didn't know enough about these cars yet. And so the state said, oh, it's got to go to a state referee um, and see if they can fix it. You'll have to pay for the repairs or we can give you $200 right now to junk it. I was like, holy crap. So I figured out how to get it to pass. And I think, I, I don't know if it was at this place that passed it. Um, but what I had done is uh, the catalytic converters were kind of clogged. So I, uh, I just got a bottle of that uh, Cataclean from Gunk. And I followed the directions. I put it into the gas, gas tank. You know, I had maybe two gallons of gas in the gas tank. Add this $25 bottle and uh, then go drive it for, I don't know, about 20 minutes and I took it up to wine country here and just floored it going up hills. I mean, I was just flooring that car and I brought it back and I passed with wine cords and the guy goes, what the heck did you do to this thing? <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't believe it. So I had the car for another five, six years and then I ended up uh, selling it on eBay. It was my wife's car and he uh, she, she just kind of stopped driving. She was not a very good driver. She kept like, you know, getting tickets for speeding and doing this and that. So she said, screw it, I'm done driving. So it was just sitting in the driveway, you know, and I just can't stand them when they sit on the driveway like that. But some guy in uh, The Utah came down with a trailer and just picked it up and it was gone. Anyways, so now they're, they're running the test. For you guys in the states that don't have these emission testing, you know, you can do whatever you want with your car, but here in California, you got to make sure that everything runs good on it, you know, because they want to get these off the road. And today is Monday. October or uh, whatever, 25th, I think. It's like the weather just, it just changed. I mean, it went from being hot all summer, all through October up to this point. You know, yesterday it was 90 degrees. It just stayed hot all summer. And then today, somebody flipped the switch and it's getting cool again. So I went in there and gave him that coupon. He goes, no, this won't work. Well, it'll take $10 off the price. Last time I was here, it was like $48. Now it's $75. So I think it'd be $65. And I can't believe it. The price of everything just keeps going up. Well, it passed in flying colors another year that the car passes so another year year and a half I have to do it all over again but at least I did, I did good